The time has come to replace conventional electrical switchboards because now you don't need a lot of switches to control different loads. With this development board, you can manage everything just through the display. Using the encoder, you can easily select any load you want and with a single switch, turn it on or off. But that's not all. If you want any load to turn on or off at a specific time, you can do that too. The addition of the encoder is simply brilliant. With it, you can not only select loads, but also adjust values, scroll through menu items and much more. There are endless possibilities with this setup. Another great product from Megafapes, the Emitech 1.28 inch tool set timer switch relay. The moment I saw this board, I was really impressed and instantly a lot of project ideas started popping into my head. You have probably already noticed it's made up of two parts. The top part is completely detachable and that's exactly what makes this board special. All the essential components are already on this board which means I can easily use it in other projects too like for sensor monitoring or even as a remote controller. In fact, I can use it in any project where I would normally use an ESP32. This is the Image Touch 1.28 inch capacitor touch display with a built-in encoder and push button. Normally, you can control everything through the on-screen switches in the UI user interface, but let's say you are using it on a bike or in any situation where you are wearing gloves. In that case, turning a switch on off through touch becomes difficult. That's where the physical button feature really shines. The same goes for the encoder with gloves on. Controlling sliders or adjusting values on a touch screen isn't practical. But with the encoder, you can easily scroll through options or fine tune values no matter the situation. On the bottom side, you will find the most versatile part of this board. My favorite, the ESP32 S3 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth module. Alongside it, there is a vibration motor, USB-C port for uploading and debugging, a battery holder for the RTC, boot and reset buttons, and plenty of headers for connecting relays, sensors, and other breakout boards. The only thing missing here is proper pin labeling, which would have made prototyping much easier. But since this is an open source project, you do get the schematic and PCB design files. So you can always check and confirm every connection yourself. This is an 8 channel relay board with opto coupler isolation. This means safety first. Your low voltage controller is completely protected from the high voltage side. This board has its own regulator power supply. So with just a simple 12 volt DC adapter, you can safely power both the relay board and your controller board. No messy wiring, no complicated setups. Just plug it in and take control. This timer switch comes preloaded with Megafabe's own firmware interface. So let's first power it up and check out how it looks with the company firmware. Now, don't get confused by the interface you see here because in this video, I'll be sharing some basic examples that will give you a complete idea of how to design your own interface in Squareland Studio and how to use both the encoder and the push button. Anyway, here you can easily set the timer using the encoder along with the on-screen buttons. And once you have set the time, just press the set button. Boom. It takes you straight to another screen. First, we use the encoder to set the time and now we can use the same encoder to select which relay we want to control. After that, we can use the switch to turn the selected relay on or off. When we turn the relay on or off, the indicator LLE on the relay board also turns on or off giving us clear visual confirmation. So far, this was the manual way of controlling all eight relays, but if you want to automatically control all eight relays or just specific ones, here's how. First, select the relay you want and then press the timer switch button. You can set the exact time for the relay to turn on and the exact time for it to turn off. And there you go. Amazing, the relay just turned on. Now, this is the future of home automation. And the best part is now everyone can enjoy futuristic home automation because this board is quite affordable. And as you can see, the relay also turned off automatically. It supports a maximum of five groups of timers, which means you can set up to five different timings for each relay. For example, if you want to control a room heater at different times of the day, you can schedule it, let's say from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m., then again from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m., 
and later from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. and so on. This feature is really handy if you want to turn one or multiple loads on and off at different times automatically. So if your only goal is to control loads, then this board is ready to use straight out of the box. But if you want to add your own custom features, redesign its UI, control it via a Bluetooth application or through the Blink application or even use it as a portable receiver or transmitter, then make sure you keep watching this video because we will be using some features right now and some we will cover in the upcoming videos. First, you need to go to the Megafabes official GitHub repository and download the complete zip folder because in this folder, you will find everything related to this board. Now, if you look at the company's firmware code, any beginner might get scared just by seeing it. That's why before diving into this code, you should start with the simple examples that I have created for you. Before we start, let me quickly share my software setup. Right now, I'm using Arduino IDE version 2.3.4 and the ESP32 board package version 2.0.11. I'm using LVGL version 8.3.11 and ESP32 time library version 2.0.6. All of my recent touch display projects have been done with the same versions and they have worked smoothly. So if you want to follow along without running into errors, I recommend using the same setup. I've created a simple template folder for you. Inside this folder, you will find two more folders. One is for saving the SQL and Studio project files and the other UI files folder is where you will store the UI files generated by SQL and Studio. I've already explained this setup in my previous projects and I will add the links to those videos in the description below. Open SQL and Studio, click on import project and browse to the SQL and Studio projects folder. Select the project file and then click the open button. Next, go to the file menu and open project settings. Set the shape to circle. For the project export route, click on browse and select the same SQL and Studio project folder. For the UI files export path, choose the UI files folder. For the LVGL include path, simply type LVGL.h. Make sure to check the option Fit export exports all files to one folder. Finally, click the apply changes button and you're all set. Everything I just explained, I have already covered all of this step by step in my SQL and Studio based projects. So if you want to understand things from the very basics, you should definitely check out my getting started videos on SQL and Studio and LVGL. For testing, I have only added these two screens. Before building a complicated UI, you should always start with a simple one. This makes troubleshooting much easier. Once everything is working perfectly, then you can move on to your actual design. After creating a basic UI, the very first step is to save the project. Next, go to the export menu and click the export UI files. Now, open the UI files folder, copy all the files and paste them into your Arduino project folder where the main.ino file is located. To upload the program, here is what you need to do. First, go to the Tools menu, Board, ESP32, and select ESP32 S3 Dev module. Go back to the Tools menu, Board, and choose the correct communication port. Again, to the Tools menu, Flash Size, and select 16 MB. Again, go to the Tools menu, Partition Scheme, and select 16 MB Flash. And one last time, go to Tools menu, PS frame and select OPI PS frame. Once these settings are done, you can simply click the upload button. The same settings will be required for all the example programs we will test. As you can see, the program has been successfully uploaded. As you can see, our template project is completely ready. On screen one, we have a button and on screen two, we have a switch. From now on, whenever I create new projects, I will simply modify this template instead of starting from scratch. Now, let's move forward and design a simple user interface to control the relays. After modifying the previous template, I have put together this simple UI. I have attached events to both switches. When I tape switch 1, it calls relay 1 on off function and when I tape switch 2, it calls relay 2 on off function clean and straightforward. You will find all the pin definitions inside the pinconfig.h file. As you can see, Relay 1 and Relay 2 are connected to GPIO 10 and GPIO 16 of the sp 32 s 3 Any functions you create in SQLand Studio will appear in the UI events.h file. 
I've used the same functions in the main.ino file to control the relays. You can follow the same approach to control additional relays as well. Anyway, I have already uploaded this program. Now let's see it in action. I've placed one switch on screen one and other on screen two. In the same way, you can add multiple screens and use separate switches on each one. Or if you prefer, you can place multiple switches on a single screen. In fact, you can even control all relays from just one button on a single screen. I will explain this in detail in the final example. I'm sure you can hear the clicking sound of the relay every time it turns on or off. At the same time, the LED indicates. Next, let's move on to the encoder and display its value directly on the screen. I have once again modified the template project and this time on screen 1, I'll be displaying the date and time. I have already made several videos on digital and analog watches. So for the basics, you can check those out. Because repeating the same things again and again can get a bit boring. On screen 2, we will be showing the encoder value. You can download the code from my website electronicclinic.com and if you need the complete project folder, it's available on my Patreon page. On screen 1, you can clearly see the exact date and time. In the programming, I have defined variables for this, so you can easily set any custom date and time you like. And the best part is, you only need to do this once. Since the board already has an RTC with a battery, the date and time won't reset even if you cut the power. If you want to update the date and time at runtime, I have already made a detailed video on that as well. Now, when I swipe my finger to the left, it takes me to screen 2, where I can monitor the encoder value. As I rotate the encoder clockwise, the value increments. And when I rotate it counterclockwise, the value decrements. To make the design look a little more attractive, I have used this background image which I designed in Photoshop. This is just to show you how easily you can improve your user interface with a simple background image. As you can see, I'm still using the same labels, only now it looks more professional. In the code, I have already made all the necessary changes. Once you read through it, you will understand the idea. If you want complete project source codes and resources, you can download them from my Patreon page. Even though I'm not a graphics designer, just adding this simple background makes the display come alive. If you have good graphics designing skills, you can create even more amazing backgrounds and yes, you can even animate them. I've already demonstrated this in my analog watch tutorials. So let's go to screen 2. By default, you will see relay 1 off because right now it's off. If it were on, you would see relay 1 on. The controller not only reads the relay status, but it also remembers the state. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Now the status has changed from off to on. Let's also turn on relay 4. And now let's turn on relay 8. If I go back, I can quickly check which relays are on and which are off. So that's all for now. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode. And thanks for watching.